All right, government class. So um, last week we talked about uh, political ideologies, um, those aspects of politics, conservative, liberal, um, so forth and so on. Um, let's review just really quick on what conservative, what liberal is. Um, where conservatives are usually on the Republican side. Um, they usually uh, believe more in um, human rights aspects with uh, the abortion laws going away. Um, they look more at government and uh, religion being one. Um, <clears throat> you might have more of limiting limiting the government's role um, and also uh, allowing citizens to really solve their own problems. Um, liberals were looking at more of uh, putting the government within um, uh, everyone's lives, um, whether it's with Medicare, Medicaid, um, those types of, of aspects. They also believe um, <clears throat> in um, the promotion of education, um, health, and justice. Um, and it should not restrict our individual freedoms. Um, so in the middle of that, uh, and I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, we have these people called moderates. Um, they fall in the middle, maybe, uh, maybe lean a little bit left, lean a little bit right. But the thing is, is they're trying to, um, balance out the hardcore right-wingers and the hardcore left. Um, so what they usually do is that they, they deal with, um, uh, ideas of economics and society, um, and, and they, they look at it more of, uh, in a way of like, um, okay, like abortion, abortion, uh, we'll look at it as bad. Um, they think it's bad, but the thing is, is they understand that there are times when uh, abortion might need to be used. Um, and, and they believe that uh, abortion should um, be be used to maybe uh, stop the death of a mother, um, abort a, a child who might have um, <clears throat> long-term health effects that uh, would totally demolish their entire life and, and not allow them to even live a normal, a normal life or even close to a normal life. Um, those types of things. So you'll see people argue with that aspect of, hey, I, I, I believe in something, um, but I also believe that it should be um, regulated somehow. And a lot of times these people are moderates. Um, they might uh, think that they're more um, democratic than Republican or Republican than Democratic, um, and, they, and they might vote on those ways. But um, what they really are is they're, they're, they're moderates in how they think about uh, the economy, how they think about uh, human rights aspects, uh, education, trade, um, what the government is supposed to be doing and how they're supposed to be acting towards, uh, towards um, citizens. Um, criminal justice reform. There are a ton of different uh, aspects um, within our within our realm of politics that people uh, will look at and feel um, strongly about um, the the one for the past what five years or so uh, has uh, really gained even more momentum uh, is um, the global warming aspect and um, you know you'll have people on the right hey global warming's a hoax this isn't something that uh, that is happening you have people on the left go, no, global warming's not a hoax. This is something that's really happening, and, and it's, it's a horrible thing. And then you have people that are in the middle, like, hey, you know, are human beings moving it on a little bit? Probably. Um, is, it, uh, is it something that is truly a hoax? No. Is it totally human beings' fault? No. But it's something that is happening. Is it, should it be something that we are looking at? And trying to stop, like how can we, how can we better our society, um, with knowing the fact that you know the Earth does go in cycles and heating and cooling. Um, so you know you you'll get someone that tries to do that. The problem with this is, is that those moderates that usually fall in the middle are now um, w within our our politics now are being pulled left or right, um, and you can see that with Bernie Sanders. 
uh, the way he is he was running his campaign um, with health care for all. Elizabeth Warren was the same way. Health care for all, uh, free free education, uh, all of those aspects that Bernie was that was he was behind. Um, you know, they 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 all sounded great and grand and extravagant, but at the same time, um, uh, you're forcing somebody who might usually vote left side, um, let's say a little bit left with Democrats, uh, to to make this decision of if they're going to become that radical or or not. Um, and you can even look at uh, look at look at Trump. A lot of the thought processes he has. Are, are bringing out some of the, the radical right um, with immigration and um, government interventions and, and those types of, uh, of things, um, calling out media. And there's a lot that, that is going on even on that side. And um, it kind of leaves those people who are moderates in, the, in, in that middle ground alienated, not, not seeing a candidate that they are... Uh, feeling comfortable with voting for, so um, <clears throat> you have this 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 process that we're going to go through here in a couple of months, um, and it's going to start ramping up really big time uh, within the next uh, probably like two months, three months, um, and and you'll you're you're going to be you know most of you are going to be a part of this um, and see how. Uh, how unfair and angry and sad politics can be sometimes. Um, usually you're not running a, a clean fight in politics. Um, so, you know, we have we have this coming up uh, to, to look at um, <clears throat> and to see what is uh, what's happening within that realm. Um, so those are the ideologies of, of moderates. Um, conservatives, liberals, remember that those, um, those ideologies are fostered by, uh, family, um, what's around you, like, what, what type of shows you watch, the news networks you watch, um, your, uh, educators is another aspect that could possibly, um, uh, give you the idea of if you are a moderate or, uh, if you're a conservative or a liberal, but remember what I was telling you guys, um, that, uh, just because, you are something doesn't mean you can adapt to a new aspect of, of politics. If you were a moderate and you what well, you were or not a moderate, sorry, if you were a conservative or a liberal, and you, and you followed conservatism and liberalism for the longest time, but you start losing touch with that party, doesn't mean you have to stay with that party or that belief system. It means that you could go to being a moderate or you go from liberal to conservative or conservative to liberal. It just matters where the Republican Party and maybe some of its offshoots or the Democrat Party and some of its offshoots are at. Um, so uh, keep that in mind as you get older. Um, your views might change uh, on society and, and how, how we interact with each other and how government interacts with us. Um, and just because your views change don't mean you're wrong or uh, you're right just means your views change and and it happens um with what you live through uh and that's one of the things with, with what's going on now with this pandemic um uh, we, we were talking uh about i was talking with arlo about it um he's, he's the guy that does the trump the trumbull county social studies uh um like curriculum and we were talking about how uh aspects of life are um uh, like people hold on to them. Uh, so like the Great Depression, a uh, great example is that um, my, my wife's grandmother, she lived through that through the Great Depression. Uh, she was young and she saved everything because she watched her parents save everything. So she, we would throw away aluminum foil uh, when she was alive and she would go through the garbage after everybody left and pick out all the aluminum foil so she could reuse it again. Um, and that was that was a saving technique that she had, that she watched as she grew up, and uh, you'll never know with this pandemic, and how it, how it's affecting your family and you yourself, um, and you know for for a while, um, you you'll you'll see how life changes. And and one of the things we were talking about too was 
how uh, more than likely when we when we get back to um, some aspect of normalcy, uh, uh, you might be seeing people wearing gloves and and wearing masks uh, while in school, while outside of it, and it might be for a long time where. Um, you know, you don't hug somebody that you don't know, or you might know, but you don't know where they've been. Um, uh, you might not handshake with someone, uh, might not even pet a dog. Like I got yelled at yesterday because uh, we went, um, not yesterday, Sunday, we took the girls around to just social distance so uh, and see my um, my dad and my stepmom and my grandparents and, and uh, some family members. And um, We've uh, we've been talking about getting a dog, and a Weimaraner is one of the things that we've been talking about getting. And this lady comes walking down the uh, road with a Weimaraner, and of course, you know, it's it's just natural to be like, hey, how you know your dog? Hey, can we pet your dog? Is it okay? And and you know, I was asking her a bunch of questions about it, and we got back in the car. I was like, everybody get the hand sanitizer. We we failed for social distancing. You all petted that dog. You don't know where that dog's been. Um, it's just something that. Uh, you know, we're going to probably have to think about until we, until we find some type of um, vaccine or uh, treatment for this, that we know that it's like the flu and um, it's not going to take us all out. Uh, so it, you'll, you'll, you'll see how your life changes and even how uh, the possibility of how government's going to change and how the interaction of government works um, because of this. So, um, that's the wrap up from last week. Um, if you go to slide, uh, let me move this over, 27. Uh, it's just a political ideology by state map, and it was done in 2018 by Gallup tracking. Um, interesting to see where um, Republican led states are compared to uh, them, Democratic led states are. Um, we talked about in class how uh, <clears throat> the 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 states that have usually have bigger um, cities, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Seattle, New York City, Boston, Philly, um, those states uh, and those cities usually vote Democrat. They have the most of the population in in the country, um, but at, at all aspects, it's not truly fair to allow just those states to win a um uh an election uh that's why the framers put together an electoral college uh and we've had this debate in class of the electoral college and should it be something that is uh, gone is it something that we should uh um revamp a little bit with maybe percentage wise instead of winner take all um <clears throat> but if you look at this map though uh the republican led states and and what is interesting about it uh, you are starting to see Ohio become um, a major swing state, and um, Michigan uh, is about average. Pennsylvania is about average. Virginia is about average. You have these states that uh, to win, excuse me, to win the election, you need to win these states. Florida is average too. And remember, I know each class we looked at this and we looked at uh, the the 2016 election, and um, Donald Trump, no, he did not win the popular vote. But what he did do was he won states that gave him more electoral votes. And he didn't win them by much. Remember, we were looking at it. I think it was like 3 million votes or something like that. Um, but it wasn't much. So you can see how these, these states, if you look at this map, that are gray, light blue, uh, or, or that, that pinkish color, um, can really set aside uh, um, and, and set a different tone to a, a, a political election. Um, one of the big states on there that we, we talked about, um, and I'll bring it up now, is Texas. Um, for the longest time, Texas was a hardcore Republican state. And when you look at it now, when you look at it uh, in, in, in a lot of the past elections, um, it is it is going more to the middle, and, and the reasoning for it is is you're starting to get more people that live within these northern states like Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New York. They're moving into Texas, and they're changing the political landscape that is within that uh, that state. So um, 
you'll start seeing uh, a lot of this stuff change. Um, and uh, you're going to start seeing maybe a, a watering down of political parties within these states. And um, maybe we get to a point where presidential candidates now really have to uh, campaign in, in, in all states um, to get their electoral votes because of the, the neutrality of these states. So we'll see if, if we move to that or not. Um, so that was uh, slide 27. Um, the next slide is, is a uh, crash course video, and I'm just going to go over it real quick. I watched it. Uh, if you watch it, um, really key into what political parties are. Um, their goal is uh, to win control of the government. I mean, that's what a political party is. They, they want their candidate to be elected. Any way they can get their candidate elected, they, they need to do that. Uh, spending money, shaking hands, kissing babies, all those aspects. Um, parties usually do not influence policies, though. The, uh, they have political ideas, um, like we talked about uh, with Republicans and Democrats. Um, and then we're going to get to that a little bit more in depth um, with, with what they believe. But uh, they, they usually do not influence a, a, a policy. Policy is made within government after the elections, not usually before, because there's so many moving parts to policy. Um, reasons for political parties. Okay, there are three main reasons. One, facilitate collective action in the electoral process. So an example of this would be like a businessman. Uh, the Republicans usually like big uh, business or business in itself, and um, they usually give tax breaks to business and so forth and so on. So a, a businessman will probably usually vote Republican. Uh, the next one, facilitate policy making. So party affiliation helps party members work together easier. So usually somebody who is a Republican that lives in Alaska will be able to work hand in hand with someone that is a Republican that lives in Florida. These two people are elected to, let's say, Congress um, because they're usually their ideas are the same. Uh, the last one is deal with politicians' ambitions. Okay. We know that there's an argument out there that um, politicians have um, an ambition where they try to make this their life, where they stay in politics for their life to make money and to be a part of politics. Um, back in the day, politics was uh, way back in the day. Let's go almost, you know, pretty much beginning of this country. It, it wasn't put together to be a career um, Many of the framers believed that politics uh, and, and serving your country as a politician should be something that uh, is, is a fluid aspect where you're not, you're not making this a, this a career aspect where we can get fresh blood, fresh ideas in to politics. But the thing is, is now, ooh, excuse me again, um, now... Um, these parties will provide a, a structure to move up within the party. So you might come in as a um, freshman congressman and be in Congress for 15 years, and by the time you're done, you might end up being Speaker of the House. And as you move from freshman congressman to Speaker of the House, you're making these steps where um, that structure is uh, helping you get to that point, and you're making more money as you're doing this, okay? So that is uh, how they deal with, you know, politicians' ambition. They all, they don't want to stay uh, just a normal politician. They, they want to get to a point where they, um, they're making more money and they have more, more ways of uh, inserting ideas. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk to you guys about are the uh, five main functions of what they do. This is according to Crash Course. We kind of did this already. Uh, within the slideshow, but I wanted to give you guys what he said, and it's pretty close to the same exact thing. He just gives some more examples. Uh, number one, recruit candidates. Can't have a political party without candidates that can um, run. And the thing is, is those candidates need to usually be somewhat squeaky clean, or uh, they need to be able to really apologize nicely. Um, so number one is recruiting candidates. Number two is you're going to nominate them. So once you find these candidates, you recruit them. 
and you go, hey, this person is going to be a good presidential candidate. They've gone through Congress. Um, they've been uh, they've been a mayor. Uh, they've been a governor. You know, I, I you can say all these political uh, positions, but once they get uh, to that point, you need to nominate that can uh, candidate. And there are three ways to do it. You've got convention and primaries are one and two. And then that last one we talked about was independent. Um, remember, independence, a third party, is usually really hard to actually get anything done and to gain any type of uh, traction in the election aspect. But usually conventions and primaries are, are what we're looking at. Um, there are two different types of primaries. There's open and closed. Uh, the good thing with closed is, is that... Um, if you're Democrat, you vote for Democrats. If you're Republican, you vote for Republican. So you don't have any um, of the aspects of outsiders that aren't part of your party voting. Open parties, which there are some states, I can't remember where the exact states were, but open parties, uh, open primaries, are where um, anybody can vote for anyone. So you have this uh, aspect where a, a person who is a registered Democrat can go in and vote for somebody who is a Democrat and someone who's a Republican. So here's the thing. If they're a registered Democrat, they're going to vote for who they believe is the best candidate to maybe, let's say, beat uh, Donald Trump. And um, if Donald Trump actually had people who were uh, running against him who had traction, those people could go in and vote for that person who was running against him because maybe they believe that their political candidate for the Democratic uh, nomination is better suited to beat that person instead of Donald Trump. So it's kind of a game of chess with that aspect of um, open primaries. Um, the, the interesting thing about this is that 25% uh, of the um, registered voters, uh, let's say registered voters party-wise, vote in these primaries. So you don't get a lot of people that vote in primaries. Um, and you've got to think that even uh, at this moment... Our, our primary numbers are probably going to be really low because um, in Ohio, you're, you're doing mail-in ballots uh, and absentee ballots. Um, and, and then you also think about it like with, with Wisconsin. They actually continued with on with their, their uh, primary. But uh, the problem with their, their primary was, was that they only had a certain amount of um, polls open and kind of you're towing a hard line of um, that, uh, pull, that, that, that voting rights act um, aspect where uh, you, you have to have political polls open for people who do not have the means to get somewhere and they have to be uh, within a, a reasonable distance and be open within reasonable times. Um, and then you also obviously have the pandemic aspect to it too with Wisconsin um, holding in-person voting. Um, so I don't know what to tell you about the November election. Uh, it could be, um, it could be mail-in if we're fighting this still, um, or if it comes back, uh, after summer, or we can go back to the original aspect of us voting in person. So, um, third one, get out and vote. Uh, so basically just helping people get out to vote. Um, uh, you, you might in your lifetime become a registered Democrat or registered Republican and um, go out and help people get out and vote. Um, you might, I don't know, run a bus and, and drive elderly people to uh, polling stations um, or, or the poor, or, you know, somebody that can't actually drive or get somewhere. Um, so those are, those are aspects of getting out the vote. Um, number four is facilitate the electoral choice. And then um, number five is the influence of national government. Uh, remember, um, parties usually do not influence policies, but they can influence the national government because right now you have in the House of Representatives, um, <clears throat> Sarah Palin, or not Sarah Palin, good Lord, what's the name from the past? Um, you have a Democrat leader of Nancy Pelosi. And um, that really um, influences how, how government works because usually the chairs of these, of these uh, committees that we, we studied up on 
um, are possibly Democrats. If that goes back to a Republican, then you're going to have a Republican speaker and you're going to have a Republican chair. So you're moving this around all the time. Um, and remember how there's an interaction between the president and Congress. So we have a Republican president, we have a Republican Senate, but we have Senate, but we have a Democrat-led Congress. So if Donald Trump gets reelected, but maybe the Democrats take Senate, um, you're going to be looking at a, a war of words again, just like you have now and just like you had with Obama in some aspects um, of getting something done. So um, political parties, uh, Washington warned about them, and yet here we are. We have political parties. Uh, so um, I, uh, uh, I'm going to post this in, in classwork. Make sure you guys view it. When you view it, um, it'll come up as uh, done, that you viewed it, and uh, I'll give you 10 points for viewing this. This is what I'm going to do uh, from now on to try to get you guys to view it. You guys really haven't been a problem. It's been the seventh graders more. Um, so uh, if you have questions, ask. Um, I'm not truly sure on what uh, what you guys are going to do this week. i got to find something for you. Probably give it to you tomorrow and have it due on Friday evening or something like that. Give you three days. So... Uh, Hopefully everybody's staying safe. Um, again, questions, uh, please ask. Um, talk to you guys later.